Welcome back to this podcast edition of 12 Days in March. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this recording, we'll review the key features of osteomyelitis for the USMLE Step 1 exam. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available at the 12 Days website. So we'll go to osteomyelitis. So big ticket item, hematogenous spread, and you need to know where it spreads. The majority, certainly in kids, are to the long bones, to the metaphysis, and we'll talk about that. In adult vertebral bodies, like urine, spreads right back to the vertebrae. Or in adult, extension from contiguous site in the setting of trauma. Uh, but kids, it's really about hematogenous. Risk factor diabetes, vascular insufficiency. The organisms are staph. For, now we're on osteomyelitis. It's still staph aureus. It's still with the same description of staph. But here, you have to be familiar with the special groups. And the special group, the only really special group, is that patient with sickle cell disease, and that's the organism is salmonella. It's salmonella species. Uh, be familiar with the microbiologic description. And that's really the only variant on the theme on osteomyelitis when it comes to the bugs. You do need to know what puts these people at risk is you get swelling in the medullary canal, small vessel thrombosis. This, you know, vascular occlusion is going to be a big ticket item with virtually all the bone infections. So you get vascular occlusion with ischemia and dead bone. It makes it really hard to eradicate these with antibiotics alone without surgical debridement. Huh, I just said that. Get used to the idea of obstruction both with necrotizing fasciitis and myonecrosis. So hematogenous spread in kids to the metaphysis because um, the organism hematogenously spreads along uh, the sinusoids. And again, because they have this uh, epiphyseal growth plate, the articular surface does not communicate with the medullary canal. In adults, we don't really have the growth plate. So metaphysis is with the medullary canal, grows up to the growth plate. That's the definition of metaphysis. And because it gets trapped there, doesn't get into the joint, doesn't get to the articular surface, it does tend to form these sinus tracts. And they seem very interested in that piece of information. Sinus tract infection in a kid with osteomyelitis, presence of a sinus tract out to the skin is basically a fistula developed. And again, here's artery coming in, bacteria, and you get this thrombosinusoidal vein, which predisposes to bone necrosis. Now, on the phases, you, they're not going to ask you what phase they're in. And this is just informational to help you understand chronic osteomyelitis, because that's where the questions will be. Okay, so acute bacteria proliferate, they proliferate, you get neutrophilic response, cellular necrosis, blocking up those vessels. Subacute, so PMNs are giving rise to mononuclear response, and now you've got dead tissue, osteoclast is eating that stuff up, you're developing granulation tissue, here's where it's spreading to the periosteum, abscess, sinus tract. So the majority of the questions are going to be about chronic osteomyelitis. Ultimately, osteomyelitis, we're already seeing established infections. So they make a big deal of the idea of dead bone, called sequestrum, and then granulation tissue surrounding, sequestering. Oh, that's funny, sequestering is sequestrum. So involucrum surrounds the sequestrum. These are just stupid, but when Dick Blue used to give this lecture, he made such a big deal, I got it on the brain, so I have to include it. But new bone formation, as you'll see in the next slide, is characteristic of osteomyelitis. It's characteristic of osteosarcoma, too. So here, again, sequestrum, it's just dead bone, period. There's nothing sexy about it. What makes it sexy when it becomes this involucrum that I added BS, because it is BS, but it's really to make it crumbs, involucrums, bony spicules. And these are actual, this is an x-ray. I did not Photoshop those in. Okay, so you just have to be aware of a sequestrum that has bony spicules as an involucrum. They don't really actually ask it. I don't know why I make a big deal of this stuff. Oh, that's why. Because <laughs> in the question, not just these questions, so osteomyelitis, mostly osteosarcoma, and when we get to osteosarcoma, I'll really drive this home. This issue of bone growth, it's just, you got dead bone and new bone growing. So when they talk about spicules, fragments, bone growth, they're trying to give you a message. And you're not going to confuse sarcoma and osteomyelitis. So clinically, insidious onset, nonspecific symptoms. You've got to go looking for these for the most part. They don't come in and say, oh, my hip, my knee sucks. They just don't feel well, and maybe they have some risk factors. They may have inflammatory signs in and around the joint, maybe. Uh, diagnostic cultures are often negative. The labs are nonspecific. Anemia of chronic disease, high sed rate, maybe a high white count. Um, it's a radiograph. So lytic focus surrounded by bony sclerosis. So bony sclerosis and a bone scan 
um, will find a hot focus if you couldn't find it by the plain radiograph. Therapeutics, antibiotics, surgical drainage. Again, in terms of ducks in a row, you, you're not going to struggle between osteomyelitis and septic joint, even though they kind of sound like they overlap and have some similarities. The osteomyelitis questions come with a big tattoo on them saying osteomyelitis. And by the way, the osteomyelitis question is probably going to be in a sickler because they want you to choose salmonella. Oh, look what I did. I'm doing this because I want to drive home. So we have a series of 10-second questions here because I'm annoying. You guys got your answers in before me. Fever, malaise, limping. So passive range of motion without pain tells you it's not in the joint. It's outside of the joint. No effusion. Bone scan is going to light up in this kid with osteomyelitis. And where do they get it? They get it in the long bones, not the flat bones. <laughs> you probably knew that before you showed up today. Here we go. Same kid. Bone scan showed increased uptake where in that long bone? Toss me a bone here, people. In the uh, metaphysis. Adults, epiph epiphysis. Kids, it's metaphysis. Locking on the brain. That's why I'm doing this stupid thing. Look, I got more stupidity. Ready? This is a good one. Yeah, it's staph aureus. I didn't, I, you know, for it to be salmonella, they got to give you, they got to give you the signs and symptoms of this patient being a sickler. Strep pyogenes can cause osteomyelitis, but it's a lower frequency than staph. It's all right if you want to call this, like, stupid. You can do that. And not enough information. The boards would never do that. Q-banks don't do that. Um, but I got my point across anyhow, right? Um, because I gave you Howl Jolly bodies. Howl Jolly bodies are, what are they, remnants of DNA in the, in the red cell, normally cleared by the spleen, but this patient has no spleen because this is the description of the sickle cell patient. They got to give more description than that, but you got the point. It worked. All right, good. What is this? Question will be about bug and bone location. Yeah, that's what I just did. Oh, so the treatment, anti-staphylococcal, vanco, joint replacement, quinolone if you have sickle cell disease. Remember, you're going after salmonella. Good. So those bone and joint infections, not a ton more. That's it. I'd be hard-pressed to tell you how else they can come after you. All right, let's do tick. And that concludes this discussion of osteomyelitis for the USMLE Step 1 exam. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 Days in March. Thank you.